Welcome back to this NPTEL course on game theory. In the last few sessions we have introduced some cooperative concepts. In this session we will look at another class of problems called matching problems. So, this matching problems these are uh, a class of problems which involve matching the members of one group of agents with one more members of a second disjoint group of agents all of whom have preferences over the possible result. So, what I mean to say that there is a group of people here this side there is another group of people here and then each person has preference over the other side and now you want to match the people between these two groups. And this problem is basically introduced by David Gale and Lloyd Shapley and it, it has generated a huge interest in this. In fact, eventually the Alvin Roth and Lloyd Shapley in fact won the Nobel Prize for their work in this. In fact, this subject is generally known as a market design. And okay, so, now we will start looking at this problem. In fact, some of the examples is that the medical internships. So, once the students graduate, they need to do internship in hospitals. So, now the students have some preference over the hospitals which hospital they should they want to do it and similarly hospitals also have preference over the students. So, this is one example. In fact, uh, Alvin Roth in fact helped devising, designing such mechanisms in ES schools. In fact, the another uh, example here is that there are patients who require some organ donation and there are people who would like to donate the organs. Now, you need to find a match between them. This is again a big problem. And then the, the other interesting thing is for example, in India let us say IITs admissions, the students have choice over IITs, IITs also look at the students ranks, how well they scored in the joint entrance examination. Now, this is again a matching and then similarly the CAT admissions, the MBA admissions in our country in India they are another thing. In fact, these two follow a different algorithms. So, we will come back to this again later. So, let us introduce the problem. So, let us say this is uh, this problem is introduced through the marriage market where there are two set of people one set is the men the other set is women. Now, every woman has a preference over men and similarly every man has preference over women. Now, what is a matching? A matching will be pairing a man and woman. Okay. Now, what is the important thing here is that if a man and woman are matched what you would like to suppose if the man prefers some other woman and that some other woman also prefers this man instead of the matching that she got then what will happen is that this, this pair of man and woman will break their current matches and they get they like to be together. So, whenever such a thing happen you say that such a pair is a blocking pair. Now, the problem in this matching problem is that does there exist a matching where there is no blocking pair and now if such a matching exists you will call that as a stable match. So, the Gal, Gale and Shapley developed an idea an algorithm which shows that a marriage market always admits a stable matching. So, first of all the each man proposes to his most preferred woman. So, because every man has preference over the woman. So, he man looks at his preferences and he proposes to the woman on the top of his list. Now, every woman looks at the proposals that she received. Now, remember that because there every man is proposing. So, uh, therefore, a woman is likely that she may receive multiple proposals or sometimes no proposal or sometimes only one proposal. So, all the things are possible. Now, look uh, the woman looks at all the proposals that she has received and then she looks at her preference list and then uh, rejects all the people in this proposers who are actually in the least list. That means, in this proposal among the men who proposed her he looks at all of them who is best among them. Ex 
except him all the others are rejected at this stage. Now that person is tentatively engaged with this woman. Now in the next step all the rejected men looks at their next preference and proposes to that man to their next preferred woman. Now this process continues and then the idea the algorithm what Gale and Shapley proved is that this algorithm eventually stops at some place that means there is no man who would like to who can propose every man is engaged with some woman. Now at this stage the algorithm terminates and then whoever are engaged they are now paid. So what Gale and Shapley showed is that this is this algorithm gives a stable match. So we will work out this. So now look at this thing why should this algorithm terminate in a finite time. So if you really look at it this algorithm every any person any man how many proposals can he do it at the most the number of women. So for example for, for the time being we are assuming that the men and women both are same both are n, n men and n women okay. and every man proposes to at, at the most n women. So therefore whenever he is rejected he will propose to another woman that, that means he will propose at the most n times. So therefore the overall algorithm can run at the most n square rounds it cannot go beyond. Therefore n square rounds is the maximum therefore this algorithm is a finite time algorithm. Now let us analyze this thing. Now look at some man let us call Bharat and another woman let us call Anita. So let us say they are not matched to each other. But let us say Bharat prefers Anita to his match obtained in this algorithm. Let us say I am calling it as DAA. What DAA means is the deferred acceptance algorithm. The idea in this algorithm is that you are not accepting until the algorithm terminates. You are deferring the acceptance. So therefore, it is known as a deferred acceptance algorithm. Okay. So let us say the Bharat prefers women Anita than the one she he is matched. But that means what the Bharat must have proposed to Anita earlier because she was on top of his list than the current person. Therefore, she must have proposed to her and if unless she rejects he will not propose to another. So therefore, this person must have been rejected by everyone else who is preferred better. Okay. So therefore, this is automatically the no man can see that he will get a better match this thing. and similarly women can the same argument goes through. In fact, women because if women whomever she is matched with if there is some other man whom she prefers then there are two things can happen either that person never proposed her or she must have rejected. If she has not rejected then she surely would have received a proposal from him. Okay. So therefore, woman is also getting the best here. So therefore, no man and woman can block this match. Therefore, this algorithm the deferred acceptance algorithm always result in a stable match. So therefore, this is a very simple argument and this algorithm is very useful in this. Okay. Now let us look at the another aspect here. Let us say the you reverse the roles of the two people instead of men proposing and then women uh, rejecting. So let us say start say that women proposes and men is rejecting then you get another algorithm. So therefore by reversing the roles you get two algorithms. So typically these two stable matches need not be same. Okay. So in fact one is women optimal algorithm when women is proposing that means he is proposing to his best her best and hence you hope that she will always get her best and when she is proposing. Similarly when men is proposing you expect that the man gets the best. Okay. So therefore the women optimal and men optimal matches that you are getting it. So in fact we can easily see that any other stable match if, if, at all, if exists that will always be in between these two things that means 
every man when man is proposing he is getting the best and any other stable matching there every man will get not better than the, the man proposal algorithm. Okay. So, this is a main uh, point with this uh, stable Gale stable Gale algorithm you are getting two stable matches and one is man optimal and other is women optimal. In fact, this is where the, the IIT admissions for example, IIT admissions look at the student optimal that means the students preference is given the priority there therefore, that is actually a student optimal whereas in the CAT admissions the institutes have a choice over the they offer to the people whom they prefer first. So, these two are the other ends of the, the deferred acceptance algorithm. So, let us look at uh, one example. So, consider this uh, 3 by 3 matrix where uh, the women and men preferences are given. So, let us say the women W here. So, that means here the W1 preferences are first M1 and then M3 then M2. Similarly, for W2 first M3 then M1 then M2. For W3 M1 is the first, M2 is the second, M3 is the this thing and similarly for men. So, let us look at it in round 1. Okay. M1, M1 will propose to look at M1, M1's best preference is W2, M1 will propose to W2 and M2 will propose to W1, M3 is also proposing to W1. Okay. In the round 1 the M1 men 1 proposed to W2 women 2 and whereas M2 and M3 that second and third men proposed to the same women W1. Now what the women will do? So W2 has received only one proposal so no, no not many proposals so therefore she will keep M1 engaged and W3 has received nothing so she has nothing to do in this round. Then W1 has received two proposals M2 and M3. Now look at the women W1's preference, look at the W1 preference. W1 prefers M1 to M3 to M2, but she received preferences for M2 and M3. Among this M2 and M3, she prefers M3. Therefore, she will reject M2 and that means in this round the M2 is rejected and M1 and M3 are engaged. So, therefore, in the, uh, the, the M2 will now offer to the next person. So, M2 if you look at it M2 the next choice is W2, W2 is the next choice. So, therefore, in the round 2 okay, M2 proposes to W2. Okay. Now what happens is that now W2 has received two proposals M1 and M2 and W1 is engaged with uh, M3. So what will happen? Now because M2, W2 has M1 and M2, so W2, M1 and M2, M1 is her preferred, preferred choice over M2. Therefore, W2 rejects M2. Once W2 rejects M2, then M2 has to go for next thing. The next choice is W3 and then M2 proposes to W3 and there are no more rejections happen. Okay. So, no more rounds will be required and W1 is now matched to M3, W2 is matched to M1, W3 is matched to M2. Okay. So, this is basically the men optimal stable match and if you reverse the roles we will actually get this W1 M1, W2 M3, W3 M2. Okay. You can see that these two are different okay. and uh, this is the second one is the women optimal and the first one is the men optimal. Now the most important thing here to notice is that these two stable matches if you take any other stable matches the, they, that match is all, always lies between these two. In other words that means every person Okay, I, I should now say that the following thing. So, let us say mu 
W mu m. These are the matches that are uh, obtained through deferred acceptance algorithm. So, let me first write down the mu 1 and mu 2 there are two stable matches what do I mean by mu 1 less than equals to mu 2 for m. For a man that means what what the men let us say let us take m in m mu 1 m what he is obtaining in under mu 1 and what he is obtaining under mu 2 ok. Suppose if if the men m prefers mu 2 m over this thing that means this way I will write it ok. He prefers mu 2 m to mu 1 m and if this happens for every m then I will say mu 1 is preferred for men by over mu 2 sorry mu 2 is preferred over mu 1 by the man. Similarly, for mu 1 is least preferred compared to mu 2 by woman. That means what the for any w mu 1 w is less than or equal to mu 2 w for the woman. This should happen for every so, this is basically this thing. In fact, as I said mu w is most preferred by w uh, women that means what every woman mu w this is happening that means what she is obtaining under the woman proposed this thing is always better to any stable match. In fact, this is not very hard to prove it if you go back to the algorithm this is obvious from there ok. So, in similarly we can uh, we can say that for any stable match the man m whatever he obtains under that stable match is the men uh, proposed algorithm gives him the better choice than any other stable match. In fact, if with this argument actually proves the following thing mu m is least preferred to women this thing and mu w is least preferred to men compared to m. So, what in the mu w the woman is getting their best whereas mu m the man is getting best and in the other things they are getting the worst. So, this is also a very interesting argument. Now, this is a very important uh, aspect of this. Now, I would like to ask you the following question. Suppose if a man or woman one of them if he makes a misrepresentation of his preferences. Suppose for example, instead of uh, saying that uh, uh, I prefer uh, this girl over the other one. So, let us say I change that preference thinking that I may get a better stable match. This is a natural thing that we would like to see. Suppose if I misrepresent my true preferences am I going to get anything better. So, again once again the algorithm if you go back to that if you see it because you are proposing according to your preference. If you misrepresent there is a chance that you may get matched with someone who misrepresent that means you have a there is a very likely chance that you will get a least preferred match in whenever you are misrepresenting ok. Because everyone else are fixing their strategy no one else has deviated from their true preferences only one person has deviated then because everyone else are following the same thing. So, whatever is accepted earlier the same thing there is a fairly good chance that they may be accepting and in fact they may get better because the player uh, one players misrepresentation. So, by misrepresenting preferences no person gains in this stable match. So, in that sense this is a the deviation is not good. So, the stable match the is actually a very uh, the mu w and mu m for example, when uh, you are looking at the men optimal match there by misrepresenting you 
the man, no man gains it. Similarly, in the mu w no woman will gain by misrepresenting. Of course, for the other stable matches there are possibilities, but let us not look at. Now, the uh, there are few interesting questions here. When, when is this, these two stable matches are equal. Suppose now look at it, suppose if mu w and mu m, these two are same, that means you have a unique stable match. There cannot be any other stable match. This is again coming from the same argument. Now, if these two are not same, then there are multiple stable matches. So, here is an interesting question that uh, one would like to ask because in this algorithm, how did we do it? The all the people are proposing to them and then some are rejected, some are engaged and then going. Now, is there a can we really come up with some decentralized algorithm? For example, look at the following question. Suppose you start with any pairing, any match, find a blocking pair and interchange. Okay. Then go on to repeat. So, if there is a blocking pair, what I will do is that I will simply interchange them. Now, by doing so, will this arrive at a stable match? This is a very interesting question that one would like to ask. In fact, this question is asked by Donald Knuth. In fact, he found actually a counter example to this. Okay. So, when you simply find a blocking pair and interchange, then it need not reach a stable match. In fact, in his example, which of course I am not uh, describing the example right now, we can certainly find such example is that I can instead of finding a block pair, choose a block in pair, then he obtains a stable match and then he asks the following question, is this, can you always find a way to reach the stable match? This is a very important question. In fact, this question is answered positively by Alvin Roth and Van der Wette. The following thing, of course, we will not go into the proofs, but let me mention this algorithm. So, start with any match. Now, find a block pair. randomly you choose any blocking pair. Now, pair the pair them and leave the their partners single and then repeat. Okay. So, you start with any matching and then find a blocking pair basically you randomly choose a blocking pair and then instead of interchanging them you pair the blocking pair and their part their current partners you just leave them single okay now you get another matching where some are single some are matched now for example if someone uh, may prefer to be matched with someone rather than being single so therefore they form a blocking pair so, therefore, they get matched in another round. So, because this randomness and then uh, they prove that with probability 1, this converges to stable match. So, this is a very important development in this subject. This also provides you a distributed algorithm. Now, there are uh, other aspects to this uh, matching problems is that now, what we have discussed is two sided and in fact, uh, we also have assumed the strict preferences. We can also assume the following thing, instead of strict, we can say that I am fine with any two of them, fine with any two, okay. that means you are indifference. 
or I can also say prefer to be single than some. Okay. So, instead of uh, matching to certain people would prefer to be single. So, this is this. So, and in fact the same problem now I can ask with these questions, these restrictions and in fact the Gale Shapley algorithm can be modified at this thing. So, this is a two sided market. The reason why we call this as a two sided is that there are two groups which are different and we are matching them. Now, there is another thing called one sided. I will not go into many details, but let me give you the idea of this problem. In fact, uh, you can work out some exercises. So, in the one sided market, there are only single set of people. So, for example, students students are there, we need to need to pair them. So, for example, an example where this pairing students come is that whenever you are allocating them to hostel rooms. So, you two guys have to be given one room. Now, let us say you we have to do this one. This is known as a one sided match. There is only one so students and they have to be paid. Now, here each student has preference over the remaining students. Okay. So, now how, how to come up with this one? How to pay them? So, in fact, uh, here in this setup, it is uh, possible is non existence of stable match. So, in exercises, you will see this thing. Okay. So, he in this setup, there is it is quite possible that stable matching need not exist. So, therefore, in this area still has lots of questions. In fact, even in the two sided market, there are a lot of interesting questions that are still open. In fact, uh, another question that comes is that what we have seen here, we have discussed in this session is that one man and one woman getting matched. But if you look at the admissions problem, several students are matched to same college. That is basically many students, many to one matching or many to many matching. So, you can actually ask the same question with many to one and many to many. So, these are all several interesting uh, directions and in fact, the good reference for this is basically a book by Alvin Roth and Sotomayor. So, this uh, provides you another aspect of the cooperative games and in fact, with this in fact, we are coming to the end of this course and uh, to recall we have touched upon few topics of game theory starting from combinatorial games and non-cooperative games and some learning and cooperative games, but there are many things that we have not discussed in this course. So, in fact, uh, at this point I should say that uh, one good reference is to look at the book by Narahari on game theory and mechanism design and there is a book by Meyerson and there is a bo book by Fudenberg and Tirol. In fact, there are many, many books. Of course, this book mostly focuses only on the non-cooperative things. Meyerson and Hari both have on the this thing. In fact, we have followed uh, some of the topics of this uh, course from this thing. Okay. And Rotan Sotomayor is a probably the one of the best reference for this stable matching. Okay. So, with this we are concluding this course and uh, hopefully we will meet you again in some other point of time in some other course thank you